Good afternoon and welcome back to The Road to Recovery, The Road to Freedom with Mark. And yes indeed it is Friday afternoon at the time I'm doing this recording and it's uh, good to be back. It's been a little bit erratic of late. I've missed a couple of shows unfortunately. I hope you missed me. Certainly missed doing the show. Um, yeah, due to lack of communication and illness and stuff, it's a bit of a shame but um, say la vie baby. Yeah, we're deep in the middle of March now, and um, it's been a very, very uh, gentle time of year, as it often is. I um, I love to travel at this time of year when I can, but unfortunately that opportunity has not been there for the last few years, and uh, I particularly like getting down the West Coast at this time of year. Um, the weather tends to be really settled, and when you get right down right down the coast towards places like Hokitika it can turn on the most amazing sunsets at this time of year and um, you know cool at nights for sure um, but beautiful beautiful warm days and um, you know I would encourage everybody if they can to get down there this year because the West Coast really, really, really needs everybody's support. They are really struggling right now with no tourists. You know, it's pretty much the lifeblood for a lot of those amazing towns. And believe you me, you will never regret going down there. And it doesn't matter whether it's Karamea at the top, Westport, Greymouth, Hokitika, or even those little places um, like you know Blackpool and Ross and Reefton and all those amazing amazing little towns there's such an incredible history you know whole townships that have vanished into the bush but there's a lot of stuff still there and the bush down there is just gorgeous and the lakes um some real spooky quiet ones with these magnificent trees around them like Brunner and that you know and if you can what I'd recommend you do is go in through one pass and out through the other. Like what I'm saying is come in through the Buller and go out through the Lewis. Or if you can, do something like, I love the Buller. I think that's it's a spectacular, they're all great passes. But if you can come in through the Buller, go to Westport, wang all the way down to Haast and come back up through Queens, to Queenstown over the Haast Pass. If you can go that way the big loop all the way down the coast you will never ever regret it i mean there's places like franz joseph if you've got large coinage they'll fly you up to fox glacier okarito lagoon where the uh <coughs> the white hair and the kotuku um breed there's uh, an outfit there will take you up on boats to see them it's absolutely incredible beautiful wonderful and beyond words what can i say we live in paradise and I realise that, you know, I'm talking to people in the Hawke's Bay. Hello up there. I hope you're doing well. I'm sure it's stinking hot up there today as it usually is, but beautiful as ever. You know, Hastings, Napier, and, and even right up round to the top and, and Gizzy and um, the peninsula out there to Portland Island where those big kings are and even swing round a lot in Point and Hicks Bay. I know how gorgeous it is up there, you know, the... The East Coast is a truly beautiful place, and I'm not putting it down at all. The wire wrapper is, is not far behind, believe you me. We've got Holdsworth here, Castle Point, Cape Palliser, uh, you know, and the farmland, the bush, Mount Bruce up my way. You know, we've just got so many riches, and we often forget that, um, you know, as Kiwis, it's up to us to all stick together and um, support each other if we can. And I, I know not everybody's rich, but every dollar sprinkled around small communities keeps mum and pop businesses, you know, those small businesses that feed families and employ people, it keeps them going. And, you know, anyone who's reliant on those overseas tourists right now is suffering like you wouldn't believe. You know, um, I don't know how these poor people can sleep at night. And this causes an enormous amount of, of stress and often that can lead to depression even chronic depression and that's what my show is about and that's my very point is that struggling makes you stress but getting support from people and, and a, a kind word and someone saying to you 
I came down all this way to spend my money and support businesses like yours because I really like what you're doing. And just be genuine about saying that. That can lift somebody's spirits like you wouldn't believe. You might only be buying a pie, but that kind of support, that genuine one-on-one -on -one support from, from me to you, you to me, that communal level of support is worth more than gold, more than money. To know that we're in this together and we're trying our best to support each other. Now, we're no angels, I understand that, you know, but, you know, rather than just give your money to a big organisation, some multinational selling you burgers or deep fried whatever, think about those little businesses, those Kiwi businesses, that now more than ever need our support because they are us, right? They are our, our brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts. They're, they're us. So I think they deserve a hell of a lot more support. And I must admit, I'm, I'm saddened when I see queues of cars at the drive-in all the way down and out into the road, and these people are just buying junk. You know, and there was a. I watched a hell of a lot of TV. There was a program that Simon Gould did, and he was out in Turkey, and he was telling you on about this Mediterranean lifestyle. And there's all these old geezers sitting out there, having having um, their evening meal together, and it was very cheap, very simple. They were poor people, you know, they didn't have a lot, but what they did have was each other, and they were happy. You know, um, they worked hard. Life was hard. They had no coin. Yeah, their, their, love, their clothes were hardly the flashiest things you've ever seen. But their faces and hands were clean and they were fed. And they loved their life. They might have a, a, a glass of wine or a cup of tea at the end of their meal, but they had this like this lamb and, and pita bread stuff. Geez, it looked wonderful. You know, tomatoes, just stuff that they can grow locally and produce for themselves. And I'm very much into this idea of... of sharing meals with people sitting around talking and if you can don't don't eat so much of the junk food i mean you know we have a major obesity epidemic in this country and hey i got eyes i can see it all around me and this again is another major problem with people's self-image now my sister she does uh, hypnotism and she she's helped so many people absolutely trans form themselves her name's lynn davis by the way if you want to look her up if you want a problem with with you know stress anxiety losing weight she's the girl to talk to she's absolutely amazing and you look at how these people have transformed themselves but it's not the looks that i'm looking at it's the comments about how they feel so much more positive about themselves and this is what it comes down to wellness physical wellness is often driven by your mental state. You know, you, you comfort eat if you're feeling sad. You, you're just cramming three king-sized bars of energy chocolate down your cake hole followed by a couple of litres of Tip Top. It's not going to be good for you, is it? The result's not going to be too pleasant. So this is the problem, is that, and, and I've done it myself, you know, I've, I've come for it when I was feeling really depressed. At one stage in my life, I, I used to live on chocolate bars. I know exactly um, how that feels, you know. I, I put on 25 kilos just doing stuff like that. It's, it's easy to slip into that habit, and the more you do it, the more you kind of need it, until at some point you reflect upon what you're doing, and you may gradually start feeling worse about yourself as you become more poor sign. But there comes a point when you say, hang on a minute, what, what am I doing here? Living on, living on king-size bars of chocolate? This isn't me. This isn't right. This is not making me happy. And the results are most certainly not making me happy. And it's at that pivotal point where you make that change. And it might be an on-again, off-again, on-again, off-again thing. But if you can... To me, I find it best to find some other distraction rather than just to try and deny myself of something. Find another distraction that is a more positive thing. Start eating whatever is healthy. Apples. Go on an apple obsession. You can eat as many of them as you want. Grapes, peaches, pears, plums, fruit, vegetables. 
I know it's a little bit more difficult to prepare things, and not everyone has the skills, but they're really not very hard to learn. If one person can buy a knife sharpener between you, so these things that you just sharpen your knife with, everything becomes so much easier. You can actually cut vegetables without chopping your fingers off. Okay, sharp knife is a safe knife, believe you me. Blunt knives are the ones that cause the damage because they don't do the job, they twist and they cut your fingers and stab you through the hands. So, you know, just a little bit of care and caution in that regard. But even if you're not capable of doing something like that necessarily, I mean, you know, chucking a few tomatoes and, and some lettuce and, and a bit of olive oil on a bowl is not that hard, and it's really not that expensive if you compare making things like salads you don't have to have massive chunks of meats like we did especially i did when i was growing up <coughs> living on a farm i mean we just we ate meat for for well actually breakfast and dinner we ate um scones with cream and butter cream and butter and and strawberry jam for lunch every day hot scones and needless to say my uncle was um 30 stone in old money how big that is well you imagine a man that fills an entire doorway that's how big he was as big as a door and man alive when he died was he ever so heavy to carry i tell you but anyway dear old uncle fred you know he lived on on, on meat and potatoes and, and, and hot scones with cream and jam you know it's hardly hardly surprising the man was humongous he, he would break scales you know, I'm not talking about a fat person, I'm talking about an absolutely massive man his bed was all bent to the ground, he was that heavy he was a big tall man, he was about oh, six, six four, somewhere around there, big big fellow, but my point is, you know, you pretty much are what you eat, and if you eat healthy this is this is the kick we've got to get on and I am very, very, very much for, A, a sugar tax to get sugar out of schools because at the moment young kids' teeth are just rotting and that leads to depression. When you've got bad teeth, you have a bad self-esteem. I know because I've had bad teeth all my life and it's been terrible for me. And to fix them, tens of thousands of dollars and there isn't really any insurance. You can bullshit your health insurer, a lot of people do, but... Really, there is no health insurance and there is no real government help. You're okay if you're a kid, but if you don't get those teeth done by the time you leave school, boy, oh boy, you will never get them done unless you, you, know, you can find a handy grand just to do a little job. But once it starts racking up into tens of thousands, you know you're doomed and you're living with rotten teeth and that leads to all kinds of health problems further down the track. And that leads to all kinds of mental problems because if you're not physically well, the chances of you being mentally well are not very high. So, you know, wellness, wholeness is, is about not just the mental self. The mental self, the mind, is not separated from the body. We are one person and that one person is, is mind and heart and, and soul, perhaps, if you believe in such things. For sure, for sure, body and body and, and mind together, and one feeds the other. So you know, if you're feeling happy in your heart, you're feeling happy in your head, you're feeling healthy, you're feeling good about yourself. If you're overweight, unfit, struggling, and believe you me, I fall into that category. I may look pretty healthy, but I am not, and I'm always trying to do a little bit. I'm always aware that it would be a good thing if I go for a walk and it's I don't have self-discipline it's not one of the things that I possess so you know it's hard for me to do it every day but I like to just go for a stroll down by the river if I can't go for a full-blown walk you know it's not always me Mr Stridey Stridey down the road that's uh, that's not my cup of tea but you know it, it, a bit of a walk occasionally even now and then I like to walk in the rain you know put on a good raincoat and a good hat and go out and put my red bands on and go for a walk on the road it's actually really nice to get out and not feel trapped because I get cabin fever when I get sometimes I don't leave my room for a long long time you know or not much just downstairs for a cup of tea in the loo and you know I might 
get trapped in my room and this is what happens when you when you suffer from depression you get into these little circles little traps where you find you're doing a bit of a groundhog day thing where you're just repeating 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 but you're not happy and it takes one step to break you out of that and get you on a positive track. And it doesn't mean that you're suddenly going to become Superman or Supergirl. It just means that you've made one stride in the right direction and, and, and you get encouragement from that and then you build on that. What I'm saying is, you know, you don't leap tall buildings in a single bound here. It's it's all a matter of progress, a step, and sometimes you go backwards and, and sometimes you realise you've been going the wrong way altogether. Uh, and you've got to find another way. It's good to talk to people who have experienced things like this because there's no teacher like experience actually going through something. There's empathy in this experience. And experience is the hardest taskmaster of all. It's the worst whip. You know, there's all different kinds of whips, but the lash is the worst. And, and the lash is, is going through something. And, you know... Lots of people are finding now for the very first time with the COVID horrible crap happening and everything that they're experiencing types of stress, types of worries, anxieties that they've never felt before. They've been okay up to this point, but now they're really starting to feel the bite. And the only way that we're going to get through this is to realise how very lucky we are and how extremely important it is that we all stick together and cooperate because it's the old story of being in a walker if one person is paddling in the wrong direction it's going to be difficult for the rest of us but if all of us are paddling in different directions we are going to go nowhere we will be out there in the middle of the sea and we will all die just going round and round in circles starving to death because we're too stupid to work together so that's what it's all about you know when you see a walker on the paddle and everyone is just boom 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 and rhythm and you see that walker pulsate almost like all of a sudden it has life some kind of spiritual magic that these men and women are pouring into this thing and expressing themselves through the walker as he lifts, lifts up on the waves. It's quite something to watch. I like to watch it side on. And you can just see the power as these, as these people are digging really deep. And you think, now that's cooperation. That's working together to achieve something that's really amazing. And I believe that we can do that as a country. You know, I think we're, we're quite resilient. But we do get, we tire easily. We're all about kia kaha and not about enough about the kia maya, about being resolute, about sticking to task, about gutsing it out. And, you know, oh, I hate it when we have to play Canterbury because they always come on strong in that final 20 minutes. And that's the time when they have won so many games and finished so many teams off because they have that tenacity, that stickability to just guts it right to the end. And the only way they do that is by training like crazy. You know, all every practice is, is a competition between these players, men and women both, and I must say, if anything, I think... Um, Women's rugby in New Zealand at the moment is um, a little superior to the men as far as the school level goes. I think there's too much emphasis now on men's rugby on, on big hits. And I, I'm not against big hits, man. I wish they'd bring back the biff. But, you know, there's too much about this, you know, big impact for the camera and not enough about the silky skills, which... I think the ladies are leading the way there. You know, their the speed of their passing and their you know their ability to do all the tricky bits, the side steps, the in and aways, the chip and chase. You know, I'm I'm looking at these women with these incredible skills, thinking, wow, you're you're not just as good as the guys. You know, sometimes you're better, but that's I think that's a healthy thing because it challenges the men perhaps to look at themselves and say, well, you know, it's not all about you know how big my muscles are. It's this is a game of skill, 
and you know people appreciate those sort of skills and you know when you see guys like that play they're they're people you never forget and they inspire you forever for your whole life you know I remember Christian Cullen boy oh boy I think his first game was against Tonga and he took three of the most smashing smashes you've ever seen boy they just about buried this kid he just got up he took it and then boom he scored that try and I thought yeah he's the business that kid and you know it's inspiring and it's good for kids to look up to people like that there is an enormous pressure and responsibility for them to behave as role models and that's not always easy for young men and women when there's all kinds of distractions booze and drugs and whatnot around them and people trying to lead them astray remember you know when you do criticize these people it's not easy for them there's all kinds of temptations and it's hard to be good well we've got about another nine minutes so i'll crack on if you don't mind um role models are not just heroes of sport um role models are people who inspire and you know i've watched a bit about this uh, attitude in sport from um disabled um athletes and i must say you know to begin with i think when we had the paralympics there was a lot of kind of look down your nose charity attitude all oh, those poor people look at them struggle on but i think over time the camera has actually looked behind just the race itself and at the people and talked to them and when you see the dedication and the the Oh, it's more than dedication, it's more than words have, the drive that these people have. And you cannot help but be brought to tears by what they have to go through, the, the pain, the struggle. Just they drive themselves beyond belief. And you're thinking, wow, you know, if I could be one-tenth as good as that, I would be a role model, you know, and, and it's it's hard it's hard for me to watch, you know, and I think, you know, I complain about my problems and I look at something like that and it pales in comparison to what these people are doing. And I think, if anything, they are the real superheroes. You know, if anyone has the right to give up, it's, it's some person who's, who's lost a leg yeah, they, they loved swimming and now they lost a leg. Boy, you know, I find it difficult to swim with two legs. I can only imagine what it must be like to be minus one. I mean, it makes it virtually impossible, and yet these people can swim ten times faster than me. I'm looking at them going, oh, my giddy aunt, look at them go. They're just like, uh, they're, like a, they're like robots. I can't believe that they can just go and go and go like that. And I saw this chap, he was in a wheelchair, right, and he's sitting in his wheelchair and he's he's doing chin-ups he's not just lifting his entire body weight he's lifting his wheelchair as well and he's got he's got arms on him like bloody the hulk i'm looking at him going wow you know i can do i can do half as many chin-ups without the chair and he's just doing it and i'm thinking wow you know what it must have taken for him to get and he, he does it with a smile on his face and i'm thinking oh no way man that's crazy but you know it, he's got himself to that point with ten thousand a hundred thousand steps and not everyone has that kind of dedication and determination i certainly would never have what it takes to be as magnificent as that but I can take inspiration from that and say, well, hell, if, if he or she can do those amazing things, at least I can make a bit of an effort. Right? It doesn't mean that I have to solve the problems of the world between now and tomorrow. It simply means that I've got to make a little bit of an effort for other people. And, and people, you know, I'm, I try to be generous with, with those who have less than I do. And oftentimes they see that generosity as weakness. And I've got to get over that and, and try and get it across to them too, that I'm doing this because you're my friend. 
okay, and don't think that I'm weak and you can just rip me off. I'm not being charitable. I'm sharing food because that, I think, is a um, a good way of, of paying more than just lip service. Now, anyone can say, oh, you know, you're a good friend, but how many people actually like, just buy you some coffee, you know. If they're always coming around, I've got some for Graham and Christine today. Just some budget coffee. It's all I've got them. It didn't cost me a lot, but I'm always drinking their coffee. And I said to Christine, look, I'll get you a packet. And she just looks at me all surprised. And no one comes around her house with a, with a packet of coffee. And it's not going to be every week. This is just one time, just to say thanks. And I think those little things that we can do for each other, those little wee things, is where I suggest we start. Uh, bring someone a tin of peaches. How hard is it? Have you ever done it? I have. It's not hard. Once you've done it, you think, that's pretty cool. You know, actually giving someone a gift, not, not at Christmas time, not at Easter, just out of the blue. You know... A dollar fifty, surely you could spare a dollar fifty for a tin of peaches, and that's a fancy pants one. I mean, you can give them a budget one for a buck. You know, expressing what they mean to you, saying thank you and actually meaning it, being genuine. Don't just just. I really hate it when people are disingenuous. How's your day been? I say. Bloody awful, you want to hear about it or what? And they kind of look at me and I'm like, well, don't ask the question if you don't want to know the answer. Don't pay me this ridiculous lip service. Have a nice day. I don't want to hear that. You know, if you're genuine about it, speak to me as a person. Don't, don't treat me like some kind of dog or a lamppost or some other, you know, dead in the head thing like you. I don't need to hear this garbage. You know, when I say thank you to somebody, I look at them and I say thank you. I appreciate that. And they kind of look at me all surprised. Thank you is not just a couple of words. It's an expression of how you feel. And that's what you need to get across to people. And, you know, what does that cost? Nothing. If we just take the time to do a little bit Especially now, now more than ever, when we need each other, there are not enough psychologists or hypnotherapists like my sister to cure everybody. There's just not enough of them. We're all struggling. Everybody is. And now you're coming into my world and you're seeing what people go through and all of a sudden everyone's going, oh, it's bloody awful, isn't it? And I say, yeah, well, it kind of is. But with each other's help, that's how we get through it. Look at that. That's me for another day. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you think about those things, about looking after each other in these times. You know, a year from now, we could be clear sailing while the rest of the world is still coming through that. So, you know, it's it's not times just to feel anxiety and be depressed. It's also a time to be very, very grateful that, you know, we're not in the middle of a pandemic. We, 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 we can have holidays. We can have Easter. We can have family. We can be together. So I think this year more than ever, we need to appreciate those around us and really, really enjoy that Easter. Make it the happiest Easter you've ever had because yay for us. We got it right and we live a long way from the rest of anyone else and that's got a lot to do with it. Let's, let's not say that we were superheroes, you know, distance has got a hell of a lot to do with it. We were able to isolate quite easily in comparison to countries that are landlocked, you know. So it wasn't all just good management. Some of it was just damn good luck in the fact that we live way down here. But nonetheless, let's celebrate it. Let's enjoy each other's company now more than ever. And, and remember that this could have been a pandemic that killed a third of the country, but it didn't. We've got each other. We dodged a bullet. And it is time for us to celebrate together and just reaffirm that we're going to get through this together. So um, thank you very much for tuning in. And I will try to get here for next Friday. And I hope you tune in. Bye for now.
Cheers.